All right, uh, McNuggets, what else do we got? What business do we have to take care of before we dive in? Not much. We're going to start with some uh, unfortunate injury news. And as always, our first topic of the day is brought to us by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay red hot on FanDuel. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than right now. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Mike, we yes. have a record for everything, you know, these days. What I think we've broken the record for most consecutive days with you saying, the Browns have unfortunate injury news. I mean, you, I think you've said that like 13 yeah. days in a and row. And the lying. thing is, I haven't lied yet, yeah, which is terrible. And yesterday we got news that Grant Delpit, we knew he was hurt, but he's officially headed to the IR. Kevin Stefanski said he may be able to, retur to return for the playoffs. That's still TBD. Right. And Agbo, kudos to him for playing the second half of last week's game against Jacksonville with a torn peck with essentially it early, one arm. fairly early. Yeah, it happened in the second quarter. Yeah. And uh, so he played, he came went out for a little bit, Our came photographer, back. Sean, had a great angle of it. I don't know if you've ingested that video. I haven't seen it yet. It's I'll look for great, it. Great. I mean, you see, he tugged on the quarterback, had it pulled, and you immediately see him grab it. Mm -hmm. And he can't, you know, he, he knows it's bad, and all of his teammates are saying, get down, get down, get down. He played after that. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's, he's a warrior. The Browns, they, they've dealt with incredible amounts of injuries, but these guys are tough yeah. as nails. And we've seen Oof. guys play through stuff that most wouldn't, but... I hate asking this question because it's cliche, it seems silly, but with all the injuries that have continued to mount up for the Browns this year, is the team cursed? Oh, Mike. Bull doesn't believe in curses, so you can't ask that. He also doesn't believe in smiles, puppies, and rainbows, but I still have to ask the question. Yeah, no, it's, it's not cursed. Uh, it's bad luck, and that's really the only way you can explain it. Um, when you look around the league, there are teams that have similar number of injuries. There's only one that has more. I think what, what's hit – particularly hard is because all these injuries are to contributors. They're all the guys that you don't want to miss on the field. Uh, it's just bad luck. You know, you can try to say, well, it's the fact that you can't hit anymore. Neither can the other 31 teams. Right. You can try to say that it was an early bye week. Yes, the Browns did have an early bye week, but there have been teams that have played nine weeks in a row without getting a bye that haven't suffered this kind of attrition. I think the only way you can, and I know a lot of people are trying to say, the strength coach isn't doing his job. Oh, stop. I mean, it's just one of those <laughs> things. It's a fluky yeah, thing. It's, Injuries are like spinning a wheel. It, it's, go ahead, Boo. It, it's just, I mean, it's, it, is, it seems ludicrous at this point. I, 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 I'm all, it's almost like you, you got to laugh to say, like, this is silly. But the good news is, I'm, I'm going to spin this in a positive way. Miles Garrett showed improvement clearly last week from the week before. He's your most important defensive lineman. Yeah. You have him. Your linebacking core right now is very healthy and playing pretty well. Okay? Ho Juan Thornhill's injury doesn't seem to be a long-term thing, so hopefully he'll be back. Denzel Ward, even if he's not back this week, he's obviously getting close, and he's your most important guy in the secondary. Joe Flacco's playing well at quarterback. You know, run nothing's changed at running back. Obviously, you'd want Nick Chubb, but the running back's – Nobody else has gotten further hurt. I know Ford got banged up a little, but he's probably going to play. Amari Cooper's getting healthier. Your tight end position is fine. Yeah, okay, you left tackle and right tackle, but they were both out last week, and, and you played pretty well. So, yeah, there's been a lot of injuries. Yes, they've mattered. Yes, if you had Nick Chubb and this guy and that guy, it'd be better. But this is one of these wacky, crazy seasons. You know, it would make sense that the one time the Browns make a deep run in the playoffs for the first time in forever would be a year where everything on paper says no chance. Happens sometimes. I know another team that went to a, a championship round when they had no business based on their roster. How about the 2016 Cleveland Indians? Their yeah. pitching staff was ravaged by injuries. It was ridiculous. One they fewer had injuries, they're probably World Series champions. No doubt. I mean, certainly they, possible. They missed but some they, big quality starts in that series. They essentially had three viable pitchers that whole World Series: Cody Allen, Andrew Miller, and and Shane. B uh, not Shane Bieber and Corey Kluber. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, it was basically it. The rest of their rotation, you were holding your breath with rotation. The rest of the pitching staff. Period. I thought along the way, you thought, oh, they're going to lose to Toronto. They're going to lose to. I can't even remember who they played in the first round. Now, they did it. It was a weird year. They got to the World Series. 
Crazier things have happened. The AFC, there's been a lot. These other teams don't have as many injuries as the Browns, but a lot of these other teams have key injuries too. Is there's anybody nobody have, that's that good in the AFC. Is Minnesota now the only other team on their fourth quarterback? Correct. Yes. Minnesota's okay. on number four as well. That's, that's crazy. You know, I, I woke up today, you know, fellas, and, you know, it's just it's a little cold out. And, you know, I woke up and, you know, my, my you know, range of motion in my neck wasn't that good. And I'm like, okay, man. So it took me a little while to warm the, the right arm up. And, and, you know, I'm going down, getting my clothes on. It took me a little bit longer to put the hoodie on. And, like, that's, that's a football life. Like, that's li- – listen, when you sign up to play football, you make a deal with the devil. You really do. Uh, any orthopedic surgeon, any trainer will tell you if you ask them. And I'll ask Bernie Kosar <gasps> later on today. He knows it. When you sign up to play football, you understand that you can die on the field. You can be injured permanently. You could be paralyzed. You can lose movement. Yeah. You can lose you, – you can have an injury that ends your career. Or are you going to deal with something that, that gets you the rest of your life? And it doesn't have to be just NFL guys. It's good. Just the countless college guys or high school guys who've had the same thing happen. That is what the game is. And a lot of fans and sometimes the media and, uh, and some people who just enjoy the game don't realize what they sign up for because it's so entertaining to watch these guys play. It is part of it. It, it is almost like bye weeks or or winning and scoring touchdowns it's bread it's it's baked in to the game so when somebody says we would have been doing this if it wasn't for injuries no you can't say if it wasn't for injuries that's the only thing that that is guaranteed is you will be injured it's just about when in your career you're gonna have it and so, how bad and how bad <laughs> it's gonna be so all these injuries here these guys it's not the strength and conditioning coach nobody no matter no no matter how much strength Nick Chubb has and he's one of the most physically in, in, imposing, intimidating, gifted athletes I've ever seen. With the strongest, With lower, the strongest half lower half of anybody in the league. You put a helmet on somebody's knee when it's playing it, you're blowing that ligament out. It just is what it is. Yep. The pectoral muscle, they tell you when you're tackling, when you get anything outside the framework of your body, it's gone. Torn triceps, all of that. So they know what it is. And, and I think for a lot of them, I feel bad for them because it's just knowing that you got to go through that level of rehabilitation. I heard when Maurice Hurst said, he's like, Maurice Hurst, like, man, we got something special going here. I'm sad for the fans. However, when you see your people go down like that, you, the guys behind them now have to take that mantle. You, your, your comrades are falling. You pick the flag up and you carry it as long as you can carry it. That's right. And that's the model you got to have. Now they got to have some young guys. Uh, you, you, Alex Wright, Siaki Ika. There's linebackers. Uh, uh, you know, that, that Fields is going to have to play. One uh, man's injury is another man's opportunity. That's your too. chance. Yeah. And, th- and think about it. We said it yesterday. How many of those individuals have been sitting at home and their family been waiting? Yeah. Hey, you think yeah. you're going to dress this week? Hey, you thinking we're the special teams this week? Yeah. You can't tell me. And they're hungry. Gonna, they're hungry right now. Yeah. And you're hungry on a team that you know can be in the playoffs. That's a great opportunity. And it'd be a chance to be a contributor. That, I mean, that, that's huge. a great opportunity. And you know what, guys? Here's the other positive spin on it. The Browns may have the most injured players. The guys who are filling in, it means the Browns have the most guys who have played less which means they're fresher. There yeah. it is. And they got also, a lot of fresh players. those guys uh, will have more experience when the playoffs roll around. Yep. The, yep. Obviously, these games are all big. But you said yesterday, when you start playing against teams that don't have noticeable weaknesses, like it's fine when you're playing against Chicago. Mm-hmm. It's fine when you're playing <laughs> against teams that you should beat on paper. Right. But when you see a team, the one thing I can promise you, whoever does get the ticket punched in the AFC, They are going to have won the battle of attrition. There's 11 teams vying for those very precious seven spots. That means four really good teams aren't going to make it. But that also means all of the teams that make it are survivors. They don't have weaknesses. They have depth. So it's really going to become apparent when you start lining up left and right tackles that are not good, when you start lining them up against teams that have waves of pass rushers that can come at you, and you can't get help from a tight end or a guard mm-hmm. on a particular one-on-one matchup. So they're but, getting experience now, yeah. so when the playoffs roll around, they're battle-tested. But, Jay, I don't think you said the teams that make it are not going to have weaknesses. They are. I mean, they will, but they won't they have won't the be glaring as many as that, the other teams that are sure, not making it. They're the teams. Right now, there's a mountain. 
and there's seven flags to be planted in that mountain. And there's 11 teams that are two-thirds of the way up that mountain and can see the path to the top. There are teams that are seven and six that are a game out of the first playoff. A wild card A spot lot now. of them. So what that means is whenever you have a lot of quality teams, the path to a championship becomes more difficult. Sure. We talked all season long about how difficult it was going to be in the AFC and how there were no good teams in the NFC. I saw three or four different power rankings yesterday. Not that they're the end-all, be-all. But most of them had the top three teams in the NFC. I don't think anybody thought there would be no good teams, just not as many good teams. They, we, we sat here and said, man, to be in the NFC. Well, Look at the quarterback gauntlet you have to go through because, to get there in the right, AFC. But everybody thought Philly and, and Philly and, and San, San Francisco, Francisco, I think, were the two teams. Yeah. But Minnesota, right now Minnesota, in the playoffs. Minnesota and Dallas were there. I think Dallas kind of jumped up, and, and they haven't had many. I believe in Dallas for the first time in forever. We'll see if they can prove they, it in the playoffs. I believe in yeah. them until the playoffs roll around. They Absolutely. always do something. They got a ch- well, they'll have to prove it, obviously, like a lot of other teams. But to your point, nobody in the AFC has clinched yet. No, nobody, and that's we have four that's weeks telling. to go. Yeah, I and no, but not a single team, not even Baltimore, who's no. got the number one seed right now. It's not clinched. And know. the Browns are. We talked yesterday. There's a pathway for the right. Browns to get the number one uh, seed. Uh, There's a pathway for them to miss the playoffs. I would yeah. not want to play. I I just wouldn't want to play these seven and six teams. Like, think about it. Like, if you're a team who you have your quarterback, if you're Baltimore, don't you just want to be like, can we fast forward this to the playoffs? Like, sure. If, if you're yeah. Patrick Mahomes, like, can you say because? We've already lost our quarterback. We've already lost our best playmakers. We, Baltimore we, is the only team in the division that is currently playing their starting quarterback. Uh, yes. So you got them and Mahomes, and then obviously the the, uh, the Dolphins. If you're those teams, you you have to be thinking, let us just get to the playoffs and sure. just without no injuries. Because once you, if you look at the Browns, the Bengals, I wouldn't really want to play the Bills either because they, they still got Josh Allen. But if you're playing the Cleveland Browns, they have nothing to lose. Yeah. Nothing. House, house money, really, when you think about it. I mean, I know we had playoff expectations, but we all sat here and said they were going to be 9-8 and eight before the season started. We all, you know, I mean, I, I can't remember what you had. Yeah, but I think was, for the most part, we were all like 9-8. and eight, They're going to be a bubble playoff team. Or, yeah. You know, they win this weekend. They're at nine wins. One of the things I want to throw out there real quickly, um, uh, there's a melt that someone sent me yesterday of Miles Garrett plays um, from NFL Films. So it, it was. There was sound. He on was it. mic'd up. Yeah. Oh my God! They're put, they put awesome. like fourteen plays in a row, and literally the yeah. sound. It's the initial collision, as yeah. you know. Yeah. At that point of contact on the offensive line, mm-hmm. the grunts and the absolute volume of the sound of the collisions of mm-hmm. two massive men with strength and speed coming together, play after play after play. When I see melts like that, it really does drive home to me. Just how physical and violent that position in particular can be. You, you meanwhile, be, yeah. I, meanwhile, I hear the word melts. I think of melting a grilled too. cheese place, I was, right? I, I, I I'm like, I'm hungry. I, I, you're making me hungry, Jay. Yeah, I probably should have explained. It is. It's an industry term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've heard of it. Yeah, I, I knew what you meant. We're okay. going to drop it in the chat. No, no, I knew, what, I knew what you meant, but I still thought of melts. It's okay. five minutes long. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Play. That's where your mind goes. I do have a question for you guys, and we're going to drop the Miles Garrett melt which for you guys is a little montage. Do we have it? Do we have it pulled? It's five minutes long. Yeah, it's So long. we're going to drop it in the chat so you can watch it. But it's so good. It's definitely worth your time. It's worth the five minutes. And Miles Garrett's a cool dude. But we talked about the guys going to IR. That's only half the Browns' issues. They had about 12 guys not practice yesterday who are still game-time decisions. These are just six I, I circled because they're important players. Denzel Ward, who did practice, but he's not cleared yet. Jordan Elliott still dealing with a concussion. Pochich with a stinger. Thornhill with his calf. Two running backs, four with the wrist, Hunt with the groin. Let's take Ward out of the equation because we thought he was going to play last week. He didn't play. They're still waiting. It's a mobility issue with his shoulder. It's not a pain thing. But of the five guys under Ward, if one of those five couldn't go against Chicago, who would be the biggest loss for the Browns as they get ready to face a My Bears team that's won three or four? Guys. I would say Hunt just because he's proven to be the short yardage I mean, think about the drives he's kept alive with third and one, third and two, third and three. The goal line situations. What does he have? Seven touchdowns? Yeah, yeah. I think he might be the best short yardage back in football. I'm not kidding. He, listen, you know, I know Bull always says efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. He's the guy in baseball terms that you would bring in to steal a base late in the game that's one run. Like, it doesn't seem like it's a critical spot. Jeez. But if you don't think it's critical, ask the Boston Red Sox how big 
Dave Roberts stolen base was. He, he, he wasn't a guy that ever, and nobody would have picked him as the most important guy on the roster. But you can make an argument that that first World Series doesn't happen if they don't have him deep on their bench. And so for me, I think it is Hunt because those yards that he churns out are invaluable at moving the sticks, c- controlling the clock, keeping drives alive, and most importantly, the exclamation point on a drive, Just- the Browns were challenged in the red zone Mm -hmm. last year and and this year without Hunt. But I think that they've, I don't know where they are, where they rank in terms of red zone scores, but I just, by my eye test, I feel a lot more comfortable when Hunt's in there. You had the Liam Neeson conversation. And oh, that was so good. By the, I missed it during overtime yesterday. Your Liam Neeson was yeah. so good. You yeah. weren't he, Oh, you were upstairs. Yeah, I was upstairs. Was upstairs. But kudos. Yeah, that was my Bush, one of my favorite. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but that was really good. Now, you know. Well, the Liam Neeson thing it, it brings me back to today, and, and when he says he has a unique set of skills, <laughs> that's and exactly Kareem right. Hunt got a unique set of skills where he's 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 kamikaze in through there. He's a tornado. Like you got two yards, he might go over top of you. You got two yards, he might run through you. And you could tell it takes a toll on his body because after these hits, there's not, you know, you don't the kind of mindset you got to have going against eight, nine man boxes and he won't be denied on the goal line. Mm. And I think, I think, I don't know if this could be something other teams use, but I do believe since the, in the league now, the refs are getting so good at one thing. The, they know where you be down at. <laughs> David, them little touchdowns 10 years ago where you, you're down at the three yard line and they give it to you anyway. <laughs> yeah, not ain't anymore. Nobody getting that out. They'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're down at the four, young man. You were stepped out. So now, them yards, you got to really get that. So I'm wondering in the league, will you have a short yardage back who is like, hey, we expecting you to run through guys and get these little touchdowns, especially if you ain't got a team. Who else is going to do it who, yeah, who, on this so roster? You're picking Kareem Hunt also. Yes. So, as soon as Mike asked that question, for the entire time as you guys were talking, I was paying attention, but also it was going around my mind like a three-way tie. And Hunt was one of the three guys. Uh, Juan Thornhill was one of the three guys. But in the end, especially because you guys already made the argument for Hunt, and it's a good argument, I'm going to go with Ethan Pochich because the Browns' offensive line, obviously – tackle's been a, a mess because they've had injuries. Yeah. But the one thing they've had all year, or almost all year, is the middle of that line has been there. But yeah. Tony, I think, missed one game. I don't think Teller's missed any. I don't think Pochich has missed any. Time, but not games. Right. And so that quality, and it's probably the best guard-center-guard combo in the league. Wow. I mean, it's right there. I don't know because I don't study the other ones. I, I don't like either, it. But I like it. And you're right. When you think about the problems we've had on the wings, yeah. thank the Lord that we've had that's stability right. in the and, middle. And, and I think that's so important. Not to mention, you got Joe Flacco. He hasn't played in a year. Just got used. He's getting used to taking yeah. snaps from poaching. And that's important, that quarterback right? center. And especially because he's under center all the time. Yeah. The only so, reason I would say that, I, that would, I would have pause on that is because – Remember, Pochitz is a replacement to a guy the Browns already had penned in as a starter. Who's so, if not Ethan, you've got Harris in the wings, but we don't, who's proven to be a pretty good center. He's, see, when he's playing, well, I don't been, agree with that. I don't think he's proven that. I mean, wow, I do. I think he's. How been, many games has he even played? But you know what? When he's been in there, he's, he's invisible, which is what you want an inv- offensive lineman to be. I, yeah. I, I, and I, at one point, he was the starter. I, if not Hunt, who? But he was he wasn't he was the starter only because they didn't think they had anybody else at the time. Well, they, they I don't made know that a he move. earned the role. But I just think right now on this team, the middle of that line is huge. And so I'm gonna go with Poach. But I, obviously I, there's a great case to be made. Who for is Hunt. the short yardage guy if Hunt can't go? Because uh, I, I watch the way these guys run. I don't know. I, mean, I don't ha- even know who's on. Who, is John Kelly still on the practice squad? It's Nick Harris, fullback dive, or DTR. Is uh, DTR. Who's on the no, but I mean, I'm not. I, I'm. I know that. Like, I, there's a difference to me between fourth and inches, fourth and you know, and one. I, when I say short yardage, I mean third and three and in. The right. answer. And you're not going to give the ball to Nick Harris on a third and they, three. They don't have one, Jay. Like, no, like, I know, and that's told, why for me, it's Kareem Hunt. Strong. We've seen Jerome Ford have opportunities, have not come Their running through. styles don't yeah. fit that mold. You're, you know, right. you called him a kamikaze. That's a great word for him. Those guys that are, that are they're warriors, and they are sacrificing their body. And I love how angry and violent 
and determined he runs in those situations. When we talked to Kareem at the, uh, at the event around Thanksgiving at Town Hall, the one thing that you could tell he takes great pride in is the fact that I want the ball in that spot. I am yeah. going to get you the couple of yards that you need, and they're going to have to basically kill me to not to keep me from he, getting either the first down or the touchdown. He is, I, I such, think a, he is such a big part of yeah. I, just the heart. It's, he's such a huge part of the team, man. It's just like you can see it. Like when he got back in here and he got an opportunity to get back playing, it was just like you 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 felt the team be rejuvenated. Like they was like that's the impact that we need. I wanted right. to ask you guys a question um, because we talked about the tackles. Um, going into the playoffs, when you only have one game, you, you, you play a must-win games at yes. that point. At some point, do they look at it? They threw, a, they threw a smoke screen at us earlier. At some point, do you say, Joe Batonio left tackle, Nick Harris at guard, hmm. Poachers at center, and I, we'll, 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 we'll have one bad tackle in Hudson and figure out if he can figure I, it on the right side? I don't think so. Yeah. I think if they were going to do that, they would have done it already. I, yeah, I don't think I, I don't think the playoffs is the time to experiment yeah, with that. I, they have tried it a little bit with not much success. I don't. I think they, you know, at least they have that strength in the middle. And why, why weaken your left guard immensely? Yeah, left tackle. Even Batonio, not used to playing left tackle, he did it a little while, a couple of years ago. Would probably be better than Christian, but mm-hmm. I think the gap between him and Christian at left tackle is not as big as the gap between him and Nick Harris at left guard. And, and Nick Harris is not really a guard anyway. I think he'd probably use Michael Dunn more than Nick Harris. Uh, no, Michael Dunn's hurt. Uh, but I, don't, I can't even think of their backup guards right now. Well, they're in a situation where I, they just don't yeah. have a lot of healthy bodies I mean, there. Garrett Christian's and, played okay. Yeah. I think he's played he okay. He's not, he's not been totally horrible. No. Like, no. We just, we just need to get It James. seems like he's had some penalties and, and bad news, spots. Yeah. Putting us in first and 15, first and 20. Hudson, Hudson has to. He can't have pre snap no. The good news is this week the Bears do not have much of a pass rush. No, they don't. Which oh, is they, that is good yeah. news. Oh no, they got Montez Sweat. They have him. Yeah, That's but it. when you look at their team numbers, they're not yeah. they're not a, among league leaders in getting after quarterbacks. You, you mentioned the the f- f- early starts. When up, Lomas Brown told me this once. He's in, later in his career, his role was as a mentor, mm-hmm. and he would tell young tackles, particularly left tackles. He said the propensity to move early was when they knew they were outmatched. Mm-hmm. They were trying to get that, particularly in passing downs, yep. they were trying to get that from, from position A to, to position B where you're swung out and you're back a couple of mm-hmm. yards. And they knew they were outmatched and they were nervous about it, so they were trying to get the advantage. Yep. And, and, and he would just say, just in those situations, you don't move until you see them move. And you know, forget about the ball, forget about the snap count. You know when they move, the ball's hot. Right. And you're just going to have to make up for your deficiency with quick feet. That's, that's, that's it. That's crazy. You're right. You're right. You, you move when they move. And, and guess what? If they move and it's, it's, it's false start. It's okay. It's that's, the penalty. That's, that's on you. Yep. You drew them and you, got the, you get the flag. 